Hey, welcome back to Blender Shipyard. Uh, we're, I'm here today with the model that we started yesterday. Uh, I made one major change, which was um, when I was looking at our UV map, uh, I found out, uh, I noticed that the, while the front of these things were looking great, the underside uh, was looking terrible. Um, it was, uh, let me show you, the underside was, the texture was running east-west. I don't know why that happened when I did, I, I think I did it using um, uh, the UV Smart Project. In this case, what I did was I just said, you know, I did a box projection. So let me show you that, uh, what that process looks like. Um, box projection tries to project all of the sides as though it was in a box. That ensures that I'm gonna have this north-south texture here and where that resides is, oh, cube projection. It's called cube projection in Blender. Um, sometimes it's called a box projection, but this, this projection is accurate enough for this model that you will not be seeing it close, close range. And if you are, you can always remap it. Uh, anyway, so now that that's done, uh, let's look at our model and what needs to be done. Well, we need to create this lashing here that I was talking about yesterday. So this goes up to the top of the mast and we know that this rope comes up here and is tied in a, a knot around it. So, wow, we've got our work cut out for us because I already converted this to, uh, a, to a mesh. Um, so let's, uh, we'll start with a new, uh, a new Bezier curve. We'll go up to number pad seven and I'm gonna add a curve, a Bezier curve. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this. Since I'm in top view, um, you can see, if I just hit R, I'm gonna rotate it in the right way. So now if I look at that, uh, I can see that uh, the, the long one comes across. So this will be the short end, right? So I'm gonna put it around here uh, and I'm going to subdivide it. So by right clicking, I'm subdividing this curve. Where is my subdivide? There we go. So now I have three uh, things. I'm gonna put this up here. I'm going to put this one here and I'm going to turn that like this and as I said in yesterday's uh, uh, video uh, always make sure learn this learn working with uh, these curves because uh, you can't really go wrong um, I'm going to move this this way so we have a very straight line and I'm going to straighten this out and I'm going to lengthen this so by doing this you can see I've got that very, very tight curve. And then I can, you know, muck around with this um, to move it, to move that around. So here I am, I'm gonna put this at the bottom of my circle, of my uh, of my dead eye here. And then I'm gonna hit E and I rotate. And I'm gonna put that here. Let me rotate it further. I'm gonna shrink the diameter. And then I can shrink the diameter here. This is the, uh, on this curve. And uh, you'll see, see now I could make this, and let, let me just do this while you're here. So it's easier maybe to see it with, uh, with the actual bevel on it, what this is looking like. And let's just take a look here. So this is looking pretty good so far, right? I've got this, maybe it's a little big in here. So I can move this. I'm going to move this on the y-axis. Um, I'm going to actually. I'm going to move this on the x-axis. That'll tighten me up into that into that slot. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, this one. I'm going to bring this in slightly. Gx. No, I like the curve, but maybe I need to move the whole point. Uh, Gy, like that. And now it's looking pretty good. That looks like a pretty good lashing uh, on there. Now let's look at this diagram. I can see that this one, the short, the, the, the long one in this case, goes behind the short one. So let's move this short one forward, GZ. So we're making this go forward and we're making this one go backward, GZ. And I'm going to rotate it slightly. And I'm going to rotate this one slightly. 
and I'm just doing this. I could be very careful and rotate this on the uh, on the uh, Y axis, but I'm just doing it by sight because this again, it moves around. It's a it's a naturally occurring object uh, that a human being has manipulated. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this GX. I'm making this very short, and I'm going to move it a little, well. We'll see. So let me hit. Um, let me go into seven again. Now I'm going to hit. Uh, I'm going to click here. This I'm now on this back one, and I'm going to hit E again, so it comes up here. And now I can rotate this, bring it up here, and uh, I'm looking a lot like my uh, my uh, my drawing here, right? So let's figure out, let's make it look more like that. I can see, I'm gonna move this uh, GX. GX, I want it to be really lined up. And I'm gonna move this GX. We're gonna, they're gonna be really tied tightly together. And I'm gonna move this GX, GZ, no, GY. Um, okay, so that looks, um, pretty solid to me, right? Doesn't that look a lot like that? Okay, so now uh, we need to create these bands around it. So what does that look like? Well, you can see these are, I think it's called, I don't know if this is called reading or reaving, but these are, uh, it's like a fine string that's wound around the two cords to tighten them together. Um, we're not gonna actually model that, we're just gonna make, uh, uh, basically a cylinder that's wide enough to cover that and then we're going to, or I'll use a, uh, a curve as a loop and then we'll create a beveled edge, uh, a beveled uh, surface to go around it. So let's, let's see how we're going to work on that. Uh, so we have a problem, right? We now need to create these things. So I'm going to add uh, a circle here. Um, and I can, oh wait, I was, I was in edit mode. So now I'm out here, I can now add a circle. So I added a circle to this object inside it. So that's not that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to add a separate curve. So uh, let's add a circle. And now I'm gonna rotate it on the X axis, RX90. Uh, I'm gonna move it GY. Uh, I'm gonna shrink it down until it's really small. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna scale it on the x-axis sx. Now you'll see that's not exactly the shape I want to have this be. So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm gonna change this to individual origins, and I'm gonna make these slightly bigger. I'm gonna scale these up until they're breaking that surface. And I think that looks about right. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like. But I think that's pretty good. Uh, we might want to you know, edit this and pull this, uh, this curve slightly this way. And I'm going to move this. Um, well, we'll have to monkey with it once it's there, but, um, then I can move this one. Okay, so now, all right, so I think that looks like the basic shape of this thing. So now we're gonna create a shape that looks like that reaving. Okay, so, and and this is where it gets fun. So I'm now in object mode. I'm gonna add another thing. I'm gonna add a curve circle. You would say, well, how does that help? Well, let's move it over to X here. I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. I'm gonna apply its rotation and scale. And I'm actually gonna do that to this too. Wait, hold on. Uh, and once I'm in here, I'm gonna hit subdivide so let's go to seven. Um, now I'm going to convert all of the control points. I'm going to hit V to vector. And now they're all 
uh, pointy. So if I move this here, right? So now I'm imagining that I'm creating the surface of the, uh, here, let me take it, let me do a grease pencil here. Uh, I'm going to create an object that looks like this, like that band of cords, as though I was winding a little uh, wire around the thing. So let me just, uh, control Z, I don't know what, oh, I'm in object mode, so uh, edit mode. So how am I gonna do that? Uh, I could have drawn it that way, but instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Now, You'll see, you know, is this ideal? Is this, uh, is this the best way to do this? It's the, for me, it's the best way. You could create, a, you know, a, you could just do a single band and then repeat it. Um, I like the, the more um, organic look of doing this by hand because, you know, everything is, you know, these are all, as I've said so many times, they're organic shapes. These are not, uh, it's not, traditional. Um, by the way, I've been doing this by hitting, uh, I've been selecting and pointing. When you're working with this, um, I should have just gone to tweak because tweak allows you to grab these. You don't have to click G to move stuff around. Uh, I don't know why I was wasting my time that way, but hey, I've wasted so much of my own time. What can I say? Okay, so I think that's about right for um, what I want. Maybe I'll drag these down a little bit more. Uh, this one needs to be like this. So now, that is my profile that I'm now gonna run around this thing. So let's make it smaller. First of all, we'll scale it down. And we're gonna do uh, Control A, rotation and scale. Then I'm gonna go to here and when I, where I go to bevel, where I've been going to this round, the circle, it just says round here. Uh, you can do it, you could do it with a profile, but I've created an object. So what object am I gonna select? I'm gonna select Bezier circle one. Let's take a look. Uh, I'm gonna tab in here and I'm gonna select all of these things. And now I'm gonna go to item and I'm gonna change my tilt to see if I, ah, there we have it. There's my band. So you can now see uh, what I was trying to get at. So let's, uh, let's scale this up. All right, so now let's, uh, let's adjust this. GX, GX. GZ. And we'll leave that like that for now. And then uh, we'll do R, Y. So now that looks really well banded around here, right? So now because I've actually got that, I'm gonna do Shift D, Shift D and then Y and it'll just move it exactly on the Y axis. So I know it's there. Now let's, oh, I have three bands here. So obviously I didn't make these long enough. And that's all fine. Okay, there you go. Now, uh, again, this is, this is regular line here, regular rope. 
and this is going to be a black uh, cord so we know that this is just going to be a black uh, color so let I'm just going to create a new material here I'm going to do a uh, black cord okay and uh, very easy to do we just drag our color down here and we've applied it here oh it looks great looks great on there uh, and you even have some rope showing through uh, so we can now select these and if you select a color of uh, an object with a with a texture defined and you hit control l it links or transfers data and if i do link materials you'll see it just joins the material to each of those and uh, then i left them separate because i need to be able to uh, edit them so i'm going to do control z here pull this down a little bit um, maybe this one can oh, it looks okay well we'll rotate it or why okay and this one has the same problem i bet nope oh fascinating now remember again it's organic so you can just see you can see how tight this is uh, g x okay See, and now that looks like it's really bound together as though it's giving some sort of, uh, you know, resistance to that, to those little cords. Okay, so uh, now we just need to apply our rope texture to this. Obviously, you can see it hasn't been uh, uh, converted yet. Um, I'm going to actually move this down to be equal to this because what we'll do is we'll create a vertex in the center of this one to which we will marry the actual shrouds that go up to the top of the mass so you'll see that uh, shortly uh, i'm just going to move that on the y-axis gy okay so now um let's convert this to a mesh convert to mesh uh, then i'm going to tab into it i'm going to select oh i'm going to go to uv editing it's selected. I'm going to uh, tab out, hit Control A, rotation and scale. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing I did before, where I selected uh, a curve to be the, um, to be the uh, um, seam. Well, we'll just mark that as a seam. Um, it's on the back here, so this is the front. So let's uh, figure that out. But now we have that seam. I can do UV unwrap, right? All UV unwrap. And now we have, uh, let's look in here. Yeah, this is correct. So you see this very high resolution area is where you have that extreme bend in it. So it's compensating for the curve on the mesh. Uh, so I'm just gonna expand this. And uh, GX, we'll move it this way. And let's see what that looks like. Looks pretty good. Uh, again, this is not the final texture, but uh, we're, you know, this is, that looks pretty solid. So let's save, go back to our layout, and then uh, turn on our rendered look. Yeah, so this is looking pretty solid. Um, we have this curve coming up, so now let's figure out where that is. Um, all right. So I know, let's go up and look at this diagram here. You can see it comes up and it goes around the back, it comes around the front, and then it does a little uh, bunny rabbit into the whole thing. Uh, you'll, you'll appreciate this when it's done. Um, I can see that this is maybe not as uh, symmetrical as I want it, but uh, we have a way of making that happen. So in terms of making that bunny rabbit aspect of this, uh, I am not going to go in and actually weave that. I'm just going to make a knot. So remember how we do that. We add a curve and we come down to knots and we add a torus knot plus. Okay. 
and it remembers my settings from before so I don't have to knock it down from a resolution of 100 to 7. So uh, now I have my, I want to make sure I have my medium point selected here. I can select all, make it smaller. I'm going to GY. Um, let's see. Uh, this curve, this is uh, too much in terms of this. I want to shrink this down because this is a loose knot, right? I want it to stay the same, approximately the same character as that. Let's see. Uh, let's rotate this on the x-axis. And we know it's a little looser. Um, I can even move these, uh, this vertex, GX. Move it there. I can move this one here, GX. Um, so now, to my eye, this looks basically like the knot that I'm supposed to be tying here. Um, and if I then pull this through here, uh, let's see, GZ, I pull this to intersect here, um, that's gonna look pretty good. And then what I can do is, because I want this to intersect, oh, come on, um, I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna grab this ring of vertices here Okay, I'm going to put on proportional editing and I'm going to hit GZ. And when you're done texturing this, if I apply a material to this, the rope material, um, you're going to see it looks a lot like what we see here. Um, now, could I could I be more careful? Could I have done this separately? Yeah, sure. Um, as you can see, as I told you, this is not as symmetrical as I'd like it. So I'm going to select this ring here. Come on, just right there, and I'm going to move this GZ to to make it more in the center here. I like that. I may move it a little on the x-axis, or I'll move it this way. Let's go up to seven so it looks symmetrical. And, you know, hey, it's whatever you want here at this point. But there we are. We've done the we've done the top here. I'm going to rotate this slightly on the x-axis. Set origin. Origin to geometry. So now I'm going to do our x. Uh, and I think that'll look pretty solid. Okay. So here we have the next installment of this, and I think it's looking pretty good. Should we change this? I think we should. I think we're gonna, gee. Let me turn off my proportional editing. There we go. That looks ship shape to me. Okay. Hey, so I think that's all we're gonna do today because I wanna make sure that you guys uh, don't get tired of me and doing this work. But that was a fun way of showing you how to lay this out, how to create a surface that you can then use to bevel a curve um, and uh, also add uh, a, a knot here where it's supposed to be. Um, so next time we're gonna be building uh, the rope around here that is secured to the chains. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, have a great day.